Hi, and welcome to another video in the R8 CSA video series. Today's video is on locate and interpret system log files and journals. So, first thing, launch terminal as always. Right, uh, so system log files. So, if we just sudo because we're going to locations that are I need most likely privileged access in most cases, so there's also some commands that need privileged access, so it's a lot easier to do this. So most lo uh, logs are in, well, by default, all logs are stored in uh, var log. Maybe some applications, obviously, that store it differently, but most applications store into var log. So if we just do a, an ls in here, we can see uh, a long list of Logs, we've got stuff like, you know, firewall D, which we'll talk about in a, a later video. We've got the virtual box, which I installed in an earlier video. We've also got things like uh, Varlog Secure, which is all like um, security related information. Um, for example, like users logging in via um, SSH, that sort of thing. So we've got all the messages in there, so we can see. Uh, yeah, so here we go. So sudo, you can see um, I've sudoed and if I've entered the wrong password and all that sort of stuff. So it keeps a, it's a log of all the security related events in there. I'll just log out. Whoops. So, okay. And oh yeah, one more is the uh, where the SE Linux events are stored. So if we have a look in here, audit and then audit.log. Oh. I'll do a VI on that. Audit.log. And this is all the SE Linux logs. Again, that's the same we'll talk about in a later video, but it's just all the events. And we can see uh, the information there. It's obviously good for debugging. So, yeah, that's a good way. We can look at stuff like you can look at the boot log, for example. That'll give you the last. Um, boot process and, and um, how it went essentially and obviously some uh, individual applications will be there as well so we can see you know mounting and starting the various bits and pieces starting services creating the system users about mounting and boot you can see like all that good information there so if you've got any boot issues you'll be able to review how it how it went there so you, you can yeah you can see there's a long list of different uh, logs here, and obviously if you install that additional applications, you'll have even more logs to review. But yeah, it's a good first place to to look if you have a, an a, an an issue with the system or an particular application. It's always worth reviewing the log and just to see exactly what's happening, the what's causing the crash or whatever. Uh, another one, there's a now there's a an application called System D, which is a built-in uh, Red Hat application, and basically the primary task of it is to manage the boot process and provide information about it. So we can use the System D hyphen analyze, and it will tell you how long it took to start up to the kernel, then it to init RD, and then to user space, and then finally the total time reached after one minute for it. so it's not particularly fast this uh, virtual machine because I haven't given it that memory much memory and uh, CPU use, uh, power but it's yeah it's, it's okay <laughs> and we can go a bit more detail in here so we can say system analyze and then blame so it's literally going to blame each um, application which took longest so we've got there's Plymouth which is, I think is part of the graphical Red Hat, we've got the VBOX, VBOX ad, yeah, so stuff like that is all taking uh, DNF, which is the uh, YUM update uh, application. I've got Network Manager, all that sort of stuff always take some time. So you can just review it and you can see what's what's taking time. So maybe your system suddenly starts taking a very long to start, time to start and you can see exactly what service is causing that. So it might be a new service you've added, for example. And because this uh, system D now handles all the system event logs, we don't actually have to have a syslog daemon. So that was a, uh, a previous uh, versions of Red Hat like 6 uh, and below, 
they all had to have uh, something like our syslog or something like that installed to actually store the syslogging messages, so all the messages from uh, the system. So that means that, um, that means, yeah, you can just, you just don't need it installed, which is always a good thing. So, and there's also uh, another application called Journal. So that's, it's the system D, and it keeps like a, uh, a a proper log file rather than this these views. We've got a, a let's say a journal of the system, so we can do journal CTL, and we can see a detailed log. So this is since the last boot up. You can see I uh, started at this time. You can see exactly what um, version Linux version we're running. If any firmware issues, you can see BIOS memory all that sort of stuff because very early on all the kernel messages if we go somewhere towards the bottom you can see any windows you start getting window manager and stuff like that uh, errors any warnings and stuff like that so yeah you can see there might be some issues there actually for me to look at at some point so and then we can do it for particular applications so we can do journal ctl and we can do sbn crond so Contab, which is essentially a, a scheduler for so you can run applications on a particular I don't know, schedule you can make it run once on a particular time or you can make it run regularly regularly maybe once a week or something like that so regularly used for stuff like um, backup scripts or something like that or you want to want to i don't know delete a user at a particular time or uh, add a particular whatever you can run it with a uh, crond or, or crontab so you can do journal cto on that and you can see any particular application based logs uh, for that, which is obviously quite good. You can do that based on the process as well. So on a particular process name, you can do on like that. So that's quite nice as well. And because the journal CTO, you can go you can go even further back the uh, log if you want it to you can do minus b to get all the events since last boot and here we go this the logs just since last boot but we can also say hyphen hyphen since equals and we can say today so it's all logs for today or we can say a particular time so we can say i don't know 21 so let's say what time is it now? Twenty eight, so let's do twenty. And there's any logs since that time. So it's quite a nice way of filtering out logs there. And of course, what a very important one is you can do journal CTL minus P and then look for error. So any error logs we've got here. So here we've got like some kernel based errors that can access doesn't mean a lot to me. That would be something I will end up Googling more than likely. But yeah, that's an interesting one. Uh, something to look at. It could be just a generic kernel bug or something like that. And just needs us to do a, a, an update at some point. We can do a journal minus F, which is to essentially follow the log. So if we do minus F, immediately we'll get the last 10 logs. Okay, so there's no, no logs at the moment, but yeah. We can maybe get, say, if I launch another terminal, there we go. So we can see a, a, about a bug come up there. So it's it's quite nice and um, it's a verbose log, and you can obviously watch it do it. So perhaps you're trying to look, launch an application and it's crashing or whatever, you might have some uh, a clue in here or in the application log, of course. <clears throat> By default, so uh, like I said, um, the journal logs are just kept um, per boot. So once you reboot your system, that log will be cleared and you'd have to, when you boot up again, you'll get a fresh log. So it's, it's not good if you want to keep it for any, any length of time. So you can actually, there is a nice way to keep the logs. So you can create a, so the first thing to do would be to make DIR. Let's make the directory so var log and then journal. Okay, and then we need to echo into the journal conf system 
max use equals and you want to set something sensible here because otherwise this um, this log can actually use up to 10% of your available space and it, obviously it can build up it won't be relatively quickly but you also want to keep that managed so maybe 50 meg would be a sensible number okay. uh, so system max use equals 50 m for 50 meg and then double arrow there and etc system d and then journal journaled or journal d conf the so journal daemon and it will right echo that into the into the conf. So we can just do grep uh, system max use etc. System system d and journal d. Okay, so system max use is now set to 50 meg there. Excellent. So now what we have to do is system ctl restart and then system well, system d hyphen journaled okay and now that will store the logs into that var log directory so if we do uh, so if we do an ls minus l t r a we should have a new directory called journal so if we cd into there oops Forgot, yeah, you have to copy this. So just right click, copy, right click, paste. So it's already writing a journal here. Oops, that's a directory. Just need to do a CD on there. So we've got system journal. It's already used up 8 meg, as you can see. It's, I, like I said, it's important to, to manage that. You can't view it like this but it will allow us to have the journal uh allow us to keep the logs uh after after reboot so it's it's a, it's a very important thing to do i think so it can be very useful okay um that's really all i wanted to cover with regards to looking at system logs um journals and all that sort of stuff uh, if there's anything else you want me to cover, please, please let me know. Um, in the comments below is probably the best place to, to let me know. Uh, if you find this video useful, please uh, like. And I've got many other videos um, on my channel, so please subscribe to my channel. If you, if you especially, we've got a Red Hat Enterprise Linux, the RHCSA series. So it's just a continuation of that con uh, series. So yeah, please subscribe if, if you enjoy the videos. Yeah, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you at the next video. Thank you. Cheers.